In this video, we're going to look at Nuke Studio and see how the latest enhancements will allow us to work more efficiently with complex projects. Timeline disk caching has been added to Nuke Studio. This enables reliable playback for complex timelines, a very crucial feature for daily review sessions as well as client sessions and an added overall efficient workflow to Nuke Studio. An EXR render of your files will be created by the GPU and will format to the resolution of your sequence to disk. Timeline disk caching can work on a sequence basis, on selected shot ranges, or on in and out points. Let's have a look at sequence caching. You'll see a new icon in the UI next to the time code. This is the sequence caching icon. From here we can create a sequence cache, clear the sequence cache, or jump to the cache settings where we'll be able to manage all settings related to the cache, including the size as well as the file path to disk. The cache icon is also color coded to signal what status your timeline caching is in. If it's dark, that means that there's nothing cached to disk. If it's gray, that means there's partial cache. And if it's orange, that means the entire sequence has been cached to disk. In addition to the timeline cache icon, you can find these options from the menu bar under cache, disk cache. You can also select a sequence in the project tab or thumbnail view, right click and select disk cache. Now let's take a look at how we can cache selected shot ranges. If we select some shots and right click, we have a new entry in the context menu. We'll have access to cache the sequence, but also we'll have options to cache selected shot ranges or to in and out points. The viewer will show a visual status of what's been cached. The white line will show us what RAM has cached and the orange line shows us what has been cached to disk. These are the default colors, but you can change this in the preferences. The behavior of the cache is based on what you have visible in the viewer, not single or occluded tracks. This means that you may have tracks with soft effects on them, others with alpha channels, different blending modes, and so on. The accumulated result of these shown in the viewer is what will be cached by the GPU to disk. If you move or modify something in the timeline that was cached, your cache will disappear. This is because the current result was not what was cached in the viewer when we created the disk cache. You can get the cache back because Nuke Studio has disk caching history. The disk caching history gives you access to all other versions of your cache. So if you modify the timeline, you will still have access to older caches if you return to a previous state of the timeline. Let's take a look at the different ways to clear the cache. From the menu bar, you can choose RAM cache or disk cache. In the RAM cache, you can clear the playback cache from the viewer, the audio waveform cache, or the audio cache. From the disk cache menu, we can clear the sequence, the selected shot ranges, the in and out points, as well as the unused cache files. Now the unused cache files are all the cache files related to cache history. You can clear all of these at once from the preferences. The clear all button is located in the preferences, so this way you won't clear all your caches by mistake. That was a quick look at the new timeline disk caching inside of Nuke Studio. 